So it's a, a flat calm morning on the bank and for those who watched the first episode that we ever did on here you remember all them fish topping? Well today there isn't anything the only movement is the birds which might be a good thing might be a bad thing it might mean the pike in deeper water with the fish but it's always good to see the silvers topping because it gives you an idea that the prey's in the area, but today not a single thing has moved, it's still as a mill pond. And we'll certainly see a bite very early on. Any twitches on that line we'll see straight away. So yeah. Fingers crossed we get one today for that baz. And one of these floats goes. As you've seen in them opening clips, it's been a freezing cold, um, frosty morning. It was ice cold on the car, um, certainly into minus figures overnight. And a sharp frost was what met me this morning when I woke up. Um, so yeah, we're on the Estate Lake with Baz in search of Pike. And what an opening shot. You know, what a place. It's a beautiful place. And I have done more videos on here this year than I normally would do and that is down to the fact that the rivers are flooded the rivers are a mess and the canal is gin clear this is gin clear but it's mega deep which is why you can do okay on here the rods are out and so you join me right next to my ledger rod which is just there on a ledger um, smelt so we'll quickly get the kettle on sit back it's about an hour into the session to get the the bacon on and have a brew and hopefully one of the rods will go and we'll get our baz his first ever estate lake pike because up to yet it's been all my rods that have been going when we've come here so whichever rod goes today it's baz's fish so fingers crossed we get one chance and he takes it and we get him a fish Right, so quickly go over the rods. Got a float rod out there. Let's zoom back out. My ledger rod there with a smelt on. And if you come round to this bay here, got a um, lamprey, and Baz has got another ledger rod there um, with a smelt on as well. And just got one bait just on top of the shelf. Just on a, on a free line, see if anything picks it up, because we had that one on the last session. Just pick it up close in. So yeah, just got that out for, you know, periodically. Having a bit of a wobble with it and then leaving it a bit. Have another bit of a wobble and then leaving it a bit longer. And I'd say the persistent planes are about. It's a bright blue sky. The bacon barms have just gone down the hatch. And it's time to sit back and have a brew. And just relax, because... Before we know it, it'll be tomorrow and be back in work. Right, so our Baz, just into a pike. I think he's just gone across the other rod. Come this side Baz, we'll keep the tension on. Keep it coming. There we go. There's our Baz's first pike on the mare. Right, obviously, the next part of Baz's development is to unhook a pike, so 
You won't be able to see us, but you'll be able to see the mat. Right. So what you're gonna do, Baz, flip it round like that. And so it's back. Right? What we want you to do is put your hand underneath there, like that, and then pull its mouth towards you. Get a tight grip underneath and pull it back towards you. So have the, the pike facing you like that on its back, underneath. Right, so as you can see there, the hooks aren't too bad. So always deal with your bottom one first. Can you see what you're doing here? Yeah? So onto it. Gentle twist. That way, the other way. There you go. And then right there's Baz with his pike. And what lovely colours again. They're saying all these videos of why we come. Nothing doesn't have to be a big pike. I mean, like, look at the yellows in that there catching the sun. Come for a good day out, good laugh, chill out. And if you get a pike like that, it's a bonus. Size really is irrelevant. It's a lovely fish. And well done, Baz. Well done, mate. It's a lovely pike. You made up? Yeah. Well done, mate. Right, so there's Baz's pike in the net, and as I say, with this net, plenty of room to rest and recuperate in the margin, and it's all ready, like ready to go back. What we've done is just done that little shot where you see him holding it up, and then we'll get a few pictures and let it go. But in that crystal clear water, what a lovely fish! And he's done great there, really, really doing well. Right, there's Baz's pike, ready to go back. So well rested. And I don't think he's gonna mess about. He knows he's free. There it goes. And lovely in that water. Right, so the fish. Has gone back now. Um, our Baz's first fish on this venue, and his journey on here pretty much mirrors mine. Um, I did two or three sessions before he even got a bite on here, coming with my mates on socials. So it's testament to the lad that he he keeps, you know, getting up dead early in the morning, keeps coming, and keeps um, you know casting the baits and and yeah, um, is up for the challenge, and it's great to see um, him being so you know persistent and persevering with it and he's got his results there in his first ever fish um it is a hard venue and the rewards are in the beauty of the fish as you can see there and to see him come from the start of the year where he was just learning to being able to hook into a fish unhook it and hold it up quite confidently um is testament to how far he's come Right, while I've got the rig out of the water after Baz's fish, um, I'll just run over it. Um, if anyone's watched the canal fishing series, they'll have seen me cover this rig in great detail. And it's the same principles that's just caught that pike. It's a simple, um, I think it's about six foot, um, lure rod. A light spinning reel with 60 pound piker drenum braid on it. And it's simply... All the way down to a trace, an 18 inch trace, and this is a bit battered because obviously it's had a pike on it. But one hook through the head, one halfway down the back of a smelt, and as you tease it in, it comes up in the water and falls, and it just looks like a dying fish. And one of the little tricks that you can do is um, wobble it a couple of times, and then on, on your last cast, leave it on the bottom, tighten your line up so the line is like, is like that on the bottom. Like that, so if that's lying on the bottom and your rod is on the bank, as soon as that fish picks up the line and moves off, then obviously your line at the end of the rod will pull off if you're tight to the bait and the fish feels 
no resistance at all. You've got to be on the ball, and it's a rig you've got to watch because obviously you look at, there's no indication of an alarm or a float. You've got to watch for the line going. Um, but yeah, just picked up that fish. As I say, you've got to be on the ball with it. Not a rig to be using if you're going to go out, sit back and have a sleep. But if you're on the ball, keep your eye on the rod. You can pick up a bonus fish. And today might well be the only fish we get. And it's come on the simplest rig of them all. And like in October, when you start seeing the birds moving like that, I don't know whether they're coming or going, but it's always a sign that change is happening. The end of last year in October, you're seeing the same formations either coming or going, but now you're seeing them doing the opposite thing and beginning to move. And that is a surefire sign that change is coming. The other day, when I was driving, there was um, some snowdrops at the side of the road. Again, another sign that change is coming. So yeah, we're slowly moving out the pike season. It won't be long before they think about spawning and it all comes to an abrupt end. But yeah, what an adventure it's been this year. I say there's still some way to go now. There's a, there's a chance obviously of a nice fish towards the end, but slowly then changes that we all see as anglers are beginning to start. It won't be long before this new growth starts coming through. Like I think there's a bit of green in it already. And yeah, subtle changes around us are happening that most of the time only us anglers see. And there's another group just heading over. Right, after last week's fiasco with the super, well the not so super noodles, normal service is resumed. Back to the king pot noodle. Stick to what you know. Right, just while we're waiting for the bite, um, there was a request this week just to look at the basic tackle that I bring with me when I go fishing. So what I've done is I've got the tackle boxes here. Um, we'll get the camera sorted above them and we'll have a look through the basic tackle that I bring with me. Um, what you will have to bear in mind is it is you know towards the end of the season. So it's not going to be as organised as it should be. But we'll have a look and see what the basic tackle that I bring with me on pike sessions on the bank. Right, so... I had some requests in the comments the other week um, about the basic tackle that I take on the bank. Apart from my rig box, um, obviously that I carry my traces in. This is the other two things that I normally carry for pike fishing. Um, simple, cheapest chips. Um, biscuit tin from Christmas. Uh, I think I bought my nan some biscuits and she gave me the tin back. Metal, solid, does the job. Protects your floats, which is its job. And I imagine if a company stuck the name on the side of it, it'd be the best thing since sliced bread. But yep, simple, does the job. In there, we've got me floats, obviously, a couple of dead bait pencils. If any of you know Mike Coots, that's one of his early pike floats that he sent me in line. Other in line floats, um, some heavy floats for the river. So you got like 35 gram. Um, that I'd use for probably a paternoster rig and obviously my oil and syringe and a few of the slider float so yeah in there all safe and sound does the job and protects it and this one here obviously so you keep all the bits and pieces it's not very organised because we are towards the end of the season but I'll run through some of it um, wire used this wire um the other year didn't really get on with it to be honest with you but kept it just for doing pop-up rigs and stuff like that if you ever get stuck you never know um this stuff was fantastic carbo flex but they stopped making it in its place this is the stuff that they now do and that's what i use um you have to heat the wire up when you want to cut it nowhere near as good as the the carbo flex and is easy to use but it does the job and you can crimp it and in all these boxes here i've got everything i need to make me traces so there's some of the um float stops that you want to see me using um and all these little compartments here as i say it is a working box so it isn't as organized as, as some but in there is my crimps let's see if we can get into the box with one hand there we go 
So you, you can see I've got a couple of beads, my crimps, diamond dice swivels behind them. Um, in one of these boxes here I've got all my leads that I'll use. Obviously I've got a couple of my leads out now. Um, stubby sinkers, my crimps so we can make a crimp up on the bank. And this one here got a couple of hooks that I've got left. And say they're fox hooks them, so barbed and barbless. They don't do semi-barbed anymore, I don't think. I certainly can't find them. Um, so if you pick them up by accident, you just crush the barbs on them. Um, them ones are useless, the baits fly off all over the place. So, yeah. Um, simple lure that I carry everywhere. I think it's about four quid. Don't care if I lose it or anything like that. Um, heavy for the rivers and stuff. Gets down. You know, if you want to have a bit of a play with a lure. Scissors for cutting the line. And then I think I've got um, a dead bait pencil that won't fit in the other box. And a simple basic knife for cutting your dead baits if you want to cut a dead bait in half. Obviously, that gets kept in there out of the way. Um, and a few other bits and pieces in there like swivels. But that's the basic tackle box that I take with me two boxes that I take on the bank and they've got everything I need to for the day's piking you know if you want to make a trace up on the bank I can do it and it is a bit organised chaos but I know where you know everything is to hand and that's all that really matters and normally if I'm going to club water I put my licences in that bit and it closes up and there we go I think it was couple of quid from go outdoors and i've had it about three or four years as you can see by the top of it it's battered but yeah there we go a little simple run through the basic tackle that i bring with me on the bank well, we're well into the afternoon now got about an hour left and typical with this place you get an early fish and then it's really quiet it has been really quiet today it's been a lovely day on the bank let's say you know, relaxing and sitting back and chilling having a laugh with our bars but it has been very quiet on the rods and it has been noticeable on the last couple of sessions that the leads have been really quiet you know when you're talking about trying to get a bite on a on the ledger or the float for that matter it's been very quiet unusually quiet you'd normally expect to get one or two but it has been quiet on them and um, a lot of them have come on that simple vig that i showed you before um just a a free lined dead bait but when you look at the size of the water it's very easy to to blank it's a huge water with a, a lot of depth so yeah a very easy water to blank on and you've got to be made up with just one fish that is the challenge on here the short hours of day that you've got and obviously the short amount of the bank that you can fish you just got to hope that the pike are in your area on the day. And today, one of them has been. We've got about an hour and a half left for one more to turn up. Right, session's come to an end now. Just walking back down to the water to help our Baz. Just dropped the car off. Um, yeah, just the one pike. And like I say, you've got to... That's, that's the way it goes sometimes. Um, it's not an easy water. Like if I spin round again like I normally do. You know what I mean? It's not an easy water, so to get one pike, you know, between us is always what we, we set out to do. If we get one each, fantastic, but if we get one pike, it's, you know, a fish to remember from here. And, you know, it's a nice pike by the colours of it, you could see. And what, like I said earlier, you know, it would have been really easy for Baz to say, I can't, I don't fancy it. He's not caught in two sessions coming. I was similar when I come with with Steve and Gary but he stuck with it and got his pike and as you can see he's just carrying a bit of the gear back to the car so yeah thank you very much for watching it'd be great if you could like and subscribe and I'll catch you all next time tight lines